welcome to my YouTube channel and today we will be making Joss Kitchen Apple Pie. For the crust, we are going to need 2 and 1 fourth cups of all-purpose flour, 2 and 1 fourth cups of all-purpose flour, for dry ingredients. Level it off with this one. Two and one fourth. I always use pinch of salt. and one-fourth cup of granulated sugar. Barely one-fourth because I don't want the crust to be too sweet because the filling is already sweet. So, scant one-fourth cup. Mix it. Also, we'll be needing about half cup of full cream milk, very cold, and very cold butter, cut into cubes. We're going to mix in the secret to a flaky and buttery crust is using butter and mixing it with my pie dough cutter. So mix it in. Do it fast because we don't want the butter to melt. You'll end up with a tough crust. We want a flaky and buttery crust. We want it to, to be, you know, like this, grainy. We can also, if you don't have a pie cutter, or I mean a dough cutter, you can do it by, with your fingers. Just squeeze it between your fingers until the butter is incorporated into the flour. Just like this. But since our hands are warm, I prefer using a cutter. As you can see, some butter are large in pieces and others are just like the flour looks like a wet sand. So that's what we want. So that when the pie crust cooks up, it will be flaky. Some more. Sometimes when the weather is too hot, I put this whole bowl in the refrigerator to keep the butter chilled again and before I continue cutting in again. So I think I'm happy with this. Now we slowly incorporate the cold full cream milk and just stir in the milk slowly. Do not beat it, just stir it in until the dough comes together. The milk should be very, very cold in order not for the butter not to melt. And then you won't end up with a buttery and flaky dough. I have a bread in the oven, that's why I have a timer on. Sometimes, because of the weather, you don't have to finish all 
the milk you have to try to gather the dough in your hand if it comes together and won't flake up it's enough but I think I have I still see some dry patches so I'll add some more okay I think about that enough I think I have to finish everything. Okay. The pie we're going to make is a double crust pie, meaning to say, aside from the base, we have a crust on top. Try to gather it. So since we're using a double crust, we will divide it into two. One is slightly larger than the other. into a disc around this try to flatten it uniformly and form it into a round disc so that it will be easier to roll it out later And now for the second one, the top cross. Okay. Don't waste any of the ingredients. to check sometimes the corners will be the outer part will be cracked try to push it with your fingers so that it will be easier to roll out later now we need to chill this for about an hour now we're waiting for the crust to get chilled we're going to fill our apples normally a classic apple pie Granny Smith is being used. The green ones, you know, very sour. But since most Filipinos don't like sour food, I mean in their dessert, I'm going to use Fuji apple. I'm going to use about six pieces, six pieces of apples that I'm going to peel and chop. one is quite hard anyway so now that's about six apples about six cups also sliced then we're going to add cinnamon I'm running out of cinnamon I need to buy some again about two tablespoons uh, two teaspoon sprinkle it Actually, there are two ways. There are two ways of making the filling. But I prefer this way. The other one is uh, you mix all everything with the cornstarch and sugar. But later I will show you 
the sauce that I'm going to make. It's a pre-made sauce. And then uh, a bit of nutmeg. It adds a bit of cake. Just about three sprinkles. And then we're going, we're going to mix this. Distribute the cinnamon in every piece of the apple. Some customers of mine prefer a lot of cinnamon, but others, they don't want the cinnamon to overcome the flavor, the overall flavor of the pie. So they just want a hint of the cinnamon. So every piece like this one, the other side hasn't been covered. So you have to check that every little piece is covered with the cinnamon. So that's it. Before I roll out my crust, I'm going to grease just a little bit my pizza plate for easy removal of the pie later. Now, I wasn't able to share the sauce, my special ingredients for my pie. Anyway, this is made of melted butter, sugar, combination of white and brown. Brown is for the caramel taste of the sauce. And of course, sugar, the white sugar. Now we're going to mix in with our apples. See how gooey it is? gooey, caramelly, buttery. Now we're going to cover each piece of the apple with the sauce. I'm going to roll out my crust. It's quite chilled already. Trying to roll it out to a 12-inch diameter crust. When rolling out the pie crust, it's advisable to move it around to avoid sticking on the surface, on the work surface. I mean. When you see cracks on the side, just gather it. The dough is too cold, that's why. As you can see, do you see the bits of butter? That's going to make the crust so buttery and flaky later. Again, gather the cracked edges. Use an offset spatula to lift it up if it's sticking on the work surface. Do not worry too much if it's sticking because you're going to use extra flour and then just move it around. We're trying to roll it out to a 12 inch or I still have 2 inches to go. Again, move it around so that it won't stick. Again, gather the cracked edges. Don't, do not worry too much about it. Okay. 
again pinch together all the cracked edges nothing to worry about we're trying to move fast so that the butter will not melt otherwise it will become hard I mean the crust will become hard again we'll measure it if we okay it's 12 inches now moving on the pan there's a technique It's either you roll it this way or just what I do is just roll it about oh I tear it okay and lift it up there There must be an inch overhang so that you're going to fold it under later when you do the flute edges. Now you wonder this one is so short. I'm looking for my scissor. You just get a bit on one side and flatten it out and voila! You have an extra overhang already. Again, I lock a little bit on this side. I notice that the butter is getting soft. That's the one I'm worried about. I'm not worried about the cracked edges because I can always do something about it. But once the butter is melted, it's going to ruin the, this one is kind of thin, so I'm going to cover it up. This one also. And I'm going to pop it into the, the refrigerator. But I'm going to add the filling already. See? It's caramel. If you can only smell it. I love the smell of cinnamon and nutmeg. And I'm going to put it on the pie already, the pie crust. The center bit must be higher than the side because as it, as it bakes, it's going to flatten out a bit. So it's better to have. Okay. I don't want to waste any, a single drop of the sauce. So get every bit of it try not to get any sauce on the side because you're going to find it difficult to close it later with the upper crust with the top crust I mean see as it going to cook it's going to go to the side. I'm going to pop it in the refrigerator for a bit while I roll out the top crust. The butter is starting to melt, so we have to move fast. 
I need 11 inches, not quite. Okay. We're just going to patch it later. Let's see, is it 11 inches? Side is 11, not quite. Well, I think it's enough. Okay, now we need to make 10 pieces of strips. So cut in the middle for the long strips, then cut five pieces on this side two, three, four, five. Also on this side, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, five, okay. the longest one in the middle we're going to put it in the middle too okay and then the next one Now how to make the lattice? So you get the middle part, roll it back, the side pieces, then get the other long one, put it in the middle. Can you imagine it now? See? No problem. Switch it around. Don't worry about all those torn pieces because we can you can remedy that. Do not worry. Just like this one. Do not worry. See? This one is already worried. Okay. Haha. <laughs> now we're going to trim it the same length because we're going to tuck it under. Harm extra warm tonight, so instead of fluting, I wanted to make flutes like this, but it's too soft. So, what I'm going to do is 
Definitely homemade. Haha. <laughs> okay, now we're going to make it look shiny afterwards after baking. We're going to mix one whole egg and a tablespoon of sugar. My oven has been preheating already for the past 15 minutes. We have to bake this at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about uh, 45 to 55 minutes. But sometimes I, I always like my baked goods especially except for the bread for other pastries like pie and cakes I always on the last 30 minutes I or at least on the last 20 minutes I bake it at a lower temperature because I don't want it to burn so fast did I brush all the pieces already okay as you can see, it's 350 degrees. After 30 minutes, I'm going to lower it to 300 for another 30 minutes, a total of one hour. <laughs> 